що наступна буде не так швидко. Я так Good morning. I want to thank everybody who joins us. Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum starts its operation today. My name is Olga Atamanova. Thank you for joining us both online and in this studio. It's been nine years of the war and today is day 386 of the full-scale invasion of our homeland by the Russian aggressor. And one of the consequences of this war is obviously the fact that the food security of the whole world is under threat now and today we will be talking about the black sea region about its security for the sake of achievement of the food security goals in the world i want to introduce our speakers today it's olga trofimtsova olga trofimtsova ambassador at large with the minister of foreign affairs of ukraine Mykola Mores, Director of the Agricultural Exports and Logistics Department at the Ministry of Agrarian Policy of Ukraine, Yulia Klimenko, Member of Parliament, First Deputy Head of Transport and Infrastructure Committee at Verkhovna Rada, Denis Marchuk, Deputy Chairman of the Ukrainian, Ukrainian Agrarian Council, Pavlo Lukinchuk, Head of Security Programs at the Center for Strategy 21, Captain of in the Reserve, and Bogdan Ustimenko, an expert on international maritime law and water navigation. Dear colleagues, I'm happy to see you here. Let's start a converse conversation with what can be done by us and the whole world to achieve those security guarantees. I would like to start with Ms. Yulia. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm happy that this topic is has started being brought up because us as Ukrainians and Ukraine we did not realize before the beginning of the war how the seas are important for us and how important we are to the world. We didn't have this perception but in reality the blocking of our ports showed even to us how important we are in terms of food security. We feed about 400 million people all around the world. We, we feed many countries with a low income in Asia and Africa. And those countries depending on us in terms of food, they de depend geopolitically too. We understand that if people are hungry, they start changing their government and their political processes are being initiated, which may go out of control in it was a case for Syria when many refugees from Syria started coming to Europe and one year ago when our parts got blocked and it became understood that we cannot export our food and we cannot feed those 4 million, 400 million people, I expected a flow of immigrants to start flowing from Asia and Middle East, and which will become a factor of destabilization in Europe and America, but that did not happen thanks to implementation of grain initiative and thanks to the ports and grain initiative and thanks to our railway which reoriented their capacities to the Danube cluster of ports we were able to export almost everything that was harvested within previous years I think my colleagues will tell more about that but from the point of view of legislation and what we should do in order not to repeat this situation we unfortunately within the last 30 years 
have not developed our maritime strategy we've never been a maritime country we were a country by the sea we never used our maritime potential either to expand our economic capacities 60 percent from our car foreign currency profit comes from the ports it's strategically and economically important for us because if we don't unblock the ports if we don't increase their capacities and we don't repair the infrastructure economic growth would be impossible for us and restoration of economy would be impossible too maritime logistics is cheapest in any case that's why as for us as a country we have to identify the strategy we have to become a maritime country we have to get rid of all the soviet documents and other documents signed back in 2000s the parliament denounced two agreements that were signed in 2001 and ratified between 2001 and 2004 when we as ukraine recognized sea of azov as internal sea which entails a number of consequences, a number of problems in terms of using of our waters and impossibility to use our seashore and economic zone in Sea of Azov. Also, until now, it's been nine years of the war, we are still partners with Russia in Black Sea, Black Sea, Black sea 4 agreement. The, Black Sea military cooperation and I think that it's only the beginning of this denouncement of two documents. There is a group team of deputies who support the issues of maritime security and we have a plan of works and we will promote Ukraine as the maritime country on a legislative level. We will do everything to clear our seashore from our northern neighbor because even if you geographically and physically you look at the map we are the second largest country in black sea basin as to the length of our shoreline and we have to dictate our rules and it's a good opportunity to implement our agenda to put our agenda in terms of black sea as a part of a global agenda we know that our diplomacy became an instrument of pressure and as to the food security in terms of diplomacy what should we do to guarantee this food security or make it at least safer thank you very much the topic is really very important I support the statement that that insufficient attention was paid during previous years or even decades of the Ukrainian independence to the legislative and security and military security of our seashore, black seashore, as talk, talking to the utilization of our ports. If we look at our port infrastructure within the last years, it was developing quite well. Uh, thanks to the private investments, private companies which invested a lot to develop both import and export through seaways, just like Monsieur Le mentioned, 60% of our currency proceeds are coming through sea logistics. But if we look at the volumes, maybe 90, maybe nine, up to 95% of our products both agrarian and metallurgical was always exported through the ports the famine the sharp famine will influence three about 350 million people all around the world and about 1 million people will be underfed so that you just understand how great is the scale of the problem problem so talking about its influence yes there was influence because since March the price for the Ukrainian growth when it was unclear what was about to go on with a Ukrainian export the prices all around the world started growing not because we supply a lot of products but because many 
countries started withholding the trade. Grain is not only a, a raw material for consumption and baking of bread, it's the fodder for the cattle, for the animals, and all those products started growing in prices too. And if for a consumer in rich countries, their expenditure grew from 5 say to 8%, for, for the countries in Africa and Asia, it was a real catastrophe. Well, we could exhale with relief when grain initiative started working. We could approximate the pre-war level of exports. And just like Miss Olga mentioned it correctly, about 90% of our pro products were exported through the ports. And now we export about 60%. So this sector is quite important. And another important thing is cost. The cost significantly influences final consumer and farmer both. If we start transporting our products with railway or automobile transport, the expenditures grow. The farmer receives less price and the final consumer receives bigger price. So it negatively influences everybody in this chain. So talking about agrarian sector, what are our losses from this insecure situation in Black Sea region? Did you calculate it? Do we understand how much do we lose? It's difficult to evaluate the losses. I think we will be able to evaluate them after the war is over, when there would be a complex analysis completed but as to the grain crops within the last market years we cut our export maybe 10 million tons comparing to the previous years plus the farmers who like I mentioned got uh, were able to sell their products at lower price in the background of growing prices for fuel and so on I cannot tell you in exact figures, but we will be able to tell it after the war. Mr. Denis, to what extent our agrarian market depends on the security situation in the sea market? Good morning. Thank you for your invitation and for our opportunity to represent the position of the middle and small manufacturers. Let's go back in history a little bit. Starting with the warfare, the export by the sea stopped immediately because Russia started threatening that all the vessels moving across the sea basin would be shot at. It stopped the commercial companies, everybody understands. No one wants to risk the, risk the vessels and the crews, so the sea export stopped and the question was posed in front of us how to survive because really 90% were exported by the sea. Alternative ways were not so efficient such as solidarity corridors. Someone from the, some manufacturers from the western Ukraine were bringing their products to the border and from the Odessa region say to the Bessarabia region. So we started moving across the noob, but the question of the export through the sea was always urgent because we were realizing we can export the majority of our products only through the sea. And thanks to the armed forces of Ukraine and to our diplomacy, our navy, which drowned the cruiser Moscow, allowed us to liberate the passage through the Snake Island and this is where started talking realistically about export through the seaways and that was a push of hope for the manufacturers because within half a year they were sitting on their grain and in their homes they had no opportunity to sell it and they could not support not only their families or their communities they were not paying anything to the state budget and it's difficult because the money was important and necessary during the war. So when the movement through the ports started back in August, it gave more hope. We started feeling it within a month that there was a growth of grain, about 10% growth of grain price. And the oil cultures, the oil cultures were sold at least at their own cost, but the 
grain crops were underpriced and in October we were able to approximate the pre-war level of export because about 4 million tons were exported through Ad Odessa plus 6.5 million tons through alternative ways so it was a signal for us that the winter campaign is about to start that the border works the, and now it's actual too because now it's the spring sowing campaign and the signals from our international partners that we will reiterate our stance and the conditions that were set forth in the Istanbul agreement should be complied with and that and the terrorist Russian state who insisted on the term of operation of the agreement within 60 days, it influences the environment, you know, because any information, it influences the markets directly. So when Russia suspended their participation, it, it suspended contracting, some future contracting by the traders. And when Russia suspended the deal, the, the whole operation was suspended because you know we we have grain not only back from 2022 but even from 2020 harvested in 2021 so in, in case in case the operation of the grain deal will continue we, it will be easier to freight the ships to enter into forward contracts and in case the deal is suspended it's important for us that the negotiations within the grain deal are continuing to have the food terrorists put in their place so we are interested in operation of the grain in initiative well we will return to the topic of 120 and 60 days mr pablo the question will be to you regarding the security whom should we cooperate with to ensure the security in the black sea region we're talking about the food security in the world about participation of ukraine in in the food security we have to we have to talk about the freedom of maritime transportation because no railway no automobile transport will replace sea transport and we cannot say about the maritime freedom during war it's nonsense i'm giving you an example bogdan will tell you more about that because he's specialist in this say half an hour ago there was an air raid alert on we were all looking at the map and ukraine was red on that map so the Black Sea is red like that within the last year. Russians, in fact, they closed the Black Sea for free navigation. And the International Maritime Organization swallowed it. And now Black Sea is a big red spot on the map of global navigation. So, and grain initiative is not real freedom why Russians agreed to it they hold the bottleneck on the Bosphorus Strait Andrei Klemenko and his monitoring group from the Institute of Black Sea Studies they track this situation and the control group which inspects the vessels in the Bosphorus Strait it comprises Russian representatives and Russians by those representatives they can at their discretion regulate this traffic like and using this and authorities here Russian Federation insolently transport transports with as if using the trade fleet the, the, there was the, they transport missiles they transport other russian cargo of military nature so it's not about the ministry of foreign affairs who should 
be responsible for it. The sea is complicated for for average citizens, but the professionals like Turkey, United States, other countries, they understand what's going on and what is being really transported because they can see it with the help of satellites and other special special pieces of equipment. The international community does not re react to those facts of violation of Convention Montreux by Russian Federation because if we open Addendum 2, there is a Section B classes and it's r written there the trade or non-battle vessels are equalized to military vessels if they fulfill the assistance function and the fact that Russian Federation transports those vessels f or switches those vessels from one company to another they are still under the state flag of Russian Federation and they can be classified as the sub supplementary unit of Russian Federation Navy, but nobody d does anything, just like Mr. Pavlo mentioned, that de delay of grain vessels is still going on, which are going from the Ukrainian ports to their destinations to the world ocean, and those which are incoming. So no freedom or security of navigation can be discussed here absolutely. And it seems to me that foreign affairs agencies from other countries don't react in a proper manner to facts like this because Turkey, I think, should be explained because it's exclusively the political will of Turkey whether those so-called trade vessels with the Russian missiles will continue coming to arm Russian army and those missiles and rockets they fly at the peaceful cities then if you allow me I would continue in in year 2021 export was 68.24 billion dollars around 70 percent of export went through the seaports for the uh, we, amounting to 47 billion dollars so 70 percent of currency proceeds are being received with the help of the seaports so our economy is oriented at the sea in fact however until now th there is no set border between ukraine and russian federation in the sea so miss yulia klemenko who was talking before me she explained those very important issues that were already fulfilled by the parliament but those are where the initial steps to protect our interest from the political position because unfortunately only under conditions of stress like this and in fact that one year of war has already passed we have only started to take those political steps. This is an insatisfactory situation, so to say. As to the position of Putin and Russian Federation, everybody knows it. Putin said that the Sea of Azov is an internal sea of Russian Federation now, and this statement is added in the maritime doctrine of Russian Federation, which was approved on the 31st of July 2022 where they removed the position that the catch strait, the international catch strait, is being covered by international maritime regime. So now Russian Federation considers Sea of Azov and catch strait their own sea objects. And Russian Federation allows itself to use force in Bosporus and Dardanella in this see doctrine so everybody may look at it again now turkey was not communicated properly maybe turkish diplomats don't understand some russian statements they should be talked to about that in fact russia historically within 300 years they're fighting for bosphorus and dardanella strait and that was one of the reasons for the World War One. And after the end of the World War Two, Stalin 
and Churchill discussed creation of the Soviet military base in Dardanella Strait. So Russian Federation has a geopolitical view of the Black Sea that bottleneck Bosphorus and Dardanella Strait. And if God forbid Ukraine falls, this crawl and sea occupation by Russian Federation will continue because their next step if Russia wins, if West does not provide us with sufficient number of weapons, Russian Federation will occupy the Snake Island and they will demand to re review the sea borders with Romania and Bulgaria, which will immediately result in the full-scale war between Russia and NATO and that war will start in the sea most likely it would not start on the land it would s start with the war for military borders i have something to add still but i <laughs> may pass the microphone i would like to give miss olga an opportunity to comment it well we accept all the critics but we have this understanding and the work is underway with our Turkish partners. We see really that. I, I think that there is understanding on part of Turkey of, of this problem that you mentioned. And from the point of view of geopolitics, this is exactly why such position is being taken by them. You know, from the very beginning we were saying that Turkey so sometimes looks stretched as a part of NATO from on one hand they respectively cannot help but support in Ukraine they have very practical interest in operation of the Grain Corridor as we already mentioned like we, we said 60 versus 120 days like one or two days ago when everybody uh, started repeating this statement by Russia the, that's, that they support the 60 days regime. Well, someone thought it's already the end of negotiations, but really it's not so. The Minister of National Defense of Turkey stated that Turkey insists on the operation of the Grand Corridor within at least 120 days further on, and they continue consultations on the level of ministers with, with Russia to make it happen. So this constant attempting of theirs and those facts that, that you mentioned that Russia uses commercial weapons for transportation of weapons. We mentioned it in open sources and during our communication with our international partners, we track it and in the opposite direction it happens in the same way or in a similar way on part of Russian Federation when they when they transport stolen grain with the transporter transport transponder switched off we are supported in tracking of all those things by our partners it's really incredibly difficult work sometimes it's horrifying and unpleasant in terms that It requires constant contact, constant negotiations, constant attention and very very uneasy communication with all of our partners. But on the other hand, the documented of all those facts, the communication of that stance that we have regarding the fact that Russia is engaged in this terrorism, not only food terrorism, but terrorism in general in the Black Sea region. It's, it, it will bring its results. So it doesn't come to the situation, like I mentioned at the beginning, not to provide any prerequisites uh, even during this war for any military advantages for Russia. The work is underway starting with our embassy in Turkey and ending with the representatives of our 
ministry who take part in negotiations like that and I think it will have its positive results. Ms. Olga, you said that the negotiations on the operation of a grain corridor are still underway. So what's our stance uh, as, to, to, as to what uh, we are hearing from Russian Federation? N well, we have no concessions. Our stance is unchanged. We, there will be no reaction to the blackmailing by Russia. We understand it clearly what Russia tries to take advantage of with, with all their statements and attempts of blackmailing. They try to soften the financial, financial sanctions that influence the Rosselhoz Bank and other financial institutions that create obstacles for them in exporting the agrarian products and fertilizers so this is where those information operations are starting and a statement of some ultimate positions but we remain with our stance and i'm happy that our partners united nations and turkey and everyone else supports us in that dear colleagues if you have any questions on the floor we will be able to answer them please let us know and now the question is to mr mccall and mr denise lately we see that our expectations as to the future harvest we expect it to reduce will it influence our international obligations what is your evaluation of this situation well it depends on what period we compare it with comparing to the previous year we expect that generally the production of agricultural products will remain on the same level as last year maybe the structure will change we have reduction in grains and something will be added in oils but first the food security of a country will be ensured because we produce a lot more than we can consume and as to the influence on the world market, I don't think that if agrarian corridors will continue operating, there will be some influence of the grain market. We will be able to fulfill all of our obligations that we've undertaken in terms of food security. Mr. Dennis, your opinion, I wanted to mention it in a different context, like Ukraine is not threatened by anything in this regard, but the key question is that our export potential will fall because i'll explain why we have the occupied territories we have the, a problem with Kherson, mikolaev and kharkiv regions now now the south is not operating Kherson could could start working but those are the huge air vast areas that that could add to the export currency process but they cannot do it Question number one, is the mine territories contaminated with unexplosed munitions and everything depends on whether they can be properly prepared. Many people say that let's not start working now. There is the assurance from state emergency service that 30% of the areas will be cleared and the agrarians will be able to work there so they have expectations maybe if not now they can go out in the fields with sowing the sunflower at least but again will it influence our export potential obviously yes it will fall so it's important to talk to our international partners to say that yeah look during difficult war time we've undertaken obligations and we fulfill it we export we do everything we can and we protect the world against aggressor and we provide the world with with the food so help us during this moment now that the aggressor has withdrawn but, but they left some consequences after them help us demand those territories so if we will be able to raise funding to raise to bring equipment to engage international teams that are specialized in demanding that will potentially expand our our export potential it's a big piece of work we will have to do within the next couple of months if i may i would like to add something to what mr denis says the topic is extremely important all those territories are according according to different evaluations up to five million hectares may be contaminated with mines so if we don't demine them shortly those 
those fields will be more and more difficult to demine later because the, the, there will be vegetation there growing. So this time is critical for us. Thank you very much for this conversation. Unfortunately, our time expires very quickly. This topic is really important and I hope that really we will be able with the help of our international partners to stabilize this situation at least to a minimum extent. Thank you very much. I'm reminding you joining us from the beginning of our conversation was Yulia Klimenko, Olga Trofimsova, Mikola Moroz, Denis Marchuk, Pavlo Lakichuk, and Bogdan Stimenko. Thank you for this conversation. We continue working, continue working for our victory and glory to Ukraine.